Hi friends, this is Dr. Surabhi Chandra making a little endeavor to improvise child health. In this video, I shall talk about and demonstrate a very common clinical sign known as the Babinski's reflex. We know it is an extensor plantar reflex which is seen in upper motor neuron lesions due to injury or affection of the corticospinal tract due to any other reason. To revise, the corticospinal tract is a descending motor tract which originates from the cerebral cortex, passes via the brainstem reaching up to the spinal cord from where the lower motor neuron begins in the form of peripheral nerves. These fibers maintain inhibitory control over the spread of the impulses from the dermatome which is stimulated to other levels of the spinal cord. For example, in eliciting the plantar reflex, we give nociceptive stimulus to the lateral border of foot which is the S1 dermatome which normally causes plantar flexion mediated through S1 and TBL nerve. So basically, plantar reflex is a spinal reflex where afferent is S1 and efferent is via S1 and TBL nerve root value L4, 5, S1, 2, 3. Once the corticospinal tract is affected, the inhibitory control is lost and firing spreads onto L4, L5 anterior horn cells, leading to the contraction of toe and extensors that is extensor digitorum longus and extensor hallucis longus via the deep peroneal nerve. The Babinski sign has five components. Doxiflexion of the great toe with or without extension and fanning of the other toes, dorsiflexion at ankle, flexion of knee and contraction of the tensor fascia lata. One must remember that only the extensor plantar response is called as Babinski's positive. A flexor plantar response is not known as Babinski's negative. So there is no term as negative Babinski sign. Babinski sign is the same as Babinski's reflex and it is a superficial reflex. We will show various superficial and deep reflexes in a subsequent video. To elicit it, the plantar surface of the foot should be free of any pathology. Eliciting equipment should be sharp but non-traumatic, for example the tip of the hammer handle or preferably the tip of a key. Make the patient lie relaxed from a couch, explain the procedure and stroke the lateral plantar side of the foot from the heel to the toes and then across the metatarsal pads to the base of the big toe. So this is how the Babinski sign is elicited by stroking the lateral border of the foot up to the base of the toes. Actually the lesion in this patient was so severe that even the slightest stroke on the lateral border produced the extensor plantar response. Sometimes even this much produces the response and you don't need to complete it up to the base of the toes. Even the maneuver does involve completing it up to the base of the toes. What if the foot is infected or injured and we cannot elicit the Babinski sign? In that case, there are some other signs by which we can elicit the extensor plantar response, some of which I have demonstrated here quickly. Open heel sign by rubbing, by rubbing down the shin of tibia. Gordon sign by squeezing the calf muscles. Shaddock sign by stroking the lateral malleolus. Bing sign by pricking the dorsum of foot. Gonda sign by forceful downward stretching of the second or the fourth toe. And finally the Sheffer sign by pressing the tendon Achilles. Then there are some other signs which are not generally asked in the examination but I have mentioned in case you wish to know. So what are the advantages of eliciting the Babinski sign? First it is a simple bedside clinical sign. Second it has an improved accuracy when compared against electromyographic findings 
and a true up going to sign is reproducible unlike voluntary withdrawal response which the child might not be able to repeat in the same manner but one must remember that sometimes there is no response to stimulation and this is referred to as neutral response this response however does not completely rule out the pathology so when can it be falsely positive there are a plethora of causes but as pediatricians we must know that age less than 1 year is an important cause rather up to 18 months due to incomplete myelination of the corticospinal tract sometimes it can also be positive in deep sleep coma under the effect of general anesthesia or even during the postictal phase of seizure remember one common factor is that the corticospinal tract has temporarily lost its negative control on the spinal cord in all these physiological states also so would you like to know who discovered it it was a neurologist joseph frankoy felix babinski who originally described it as the toes phenomenon or phenomenon d or tails but later eponymously referred to as the babinski sign thank you for watching till the end and have a good day